Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be something I haven't done before and this is going to be focusing on my niche fragrances. So these are my top I think six or seven niche fragrances of the moment, the ones that I absolutely love the most out of my entire collection. And if you guys have been following me on Instagram you probably saw that I made a little post about going on a low buy for a few months, at least a few months if not longer in 2021 because 2020 I definitely went a little bit overboard buying perfumes. So the next few months for sure, if not the whole year, is going to be focused on quality over quantity and sharing with you guys what I've been wearing, how I'm displaying things, and of course discovering new amazing fragrances, but not doing so many blind buy crazy hauls like I did in 2020. So if you guys are interested in going on a low buy journey with me, feel free to join me. If this is your first time here, hello and thank you so much for clicking on my thumbnail. My name is Alithia and on this channel we talk mostly about fragrances. So if that is your thing, definitely feel free to head on down and hit the subscribe button and without further ado let's get started so the first one that we'll talk about is actually one that I have not even mentioned yet I got this a couple of weeks ago and I can't believe I didn't think to talk about it in a recent haul that I did this is Nishane 100 silent ways so this one is basically a fruity white floral woody fragrance it has tuberose it has mandarin it's got some peach it has other white flowers it's got a lot of vanilla and it has a little bit of an earthiness too um, so this one I actually have to give credit to Emmy's World of Fragrance. I will put a link to her channel down below. She was the first person that I really heard talk about this one and she sort of piqued my interest and from then on I was sort of obsessed with finding um, a sample and seeing if this is something that I would like to bring into my collection. So first I just want to show you guys a close-up of the bottle. The bottles are so beautiful. They just look so high class. Um, and also the name of the perfume, 100 Silent Ways, it just sounds so beautiful and so majestic. And I just thought I have to check this one out. Like the name alone, made me become a little bit obsessed with this fragrance. Um, so this is one that when I actually got the sample, I was not super in love with it. It was okay, but I didn't love it. Um, and I actually had to wear it a couple of times before I really fell in love with this one. And finally, about the third time wearing it, I couldn't stop sniffing my wrist. So this one starts out a little bit fruity, a little bit peachy, a little bit apricot-y almost. And then it does pull a little bit white floral, but the dry down of this is again, where the magic happens for me. The dry down is where you get this gorgeous, creamy, earthy vanilla. It's very feminine. It's very pretty. It's very classy. When would I wear this one? I think I would wear this one summertime evening. It, for me, it doesn't strike me as much of a winter perfume. I think you could still do it in winter because it does have the vanilla and it does have the... Um, warm woody notes to it but for me I think this is definitely like summertime night um, summertime date night maybe yeah so I do really like this one I get great performance out of this one it projects probably about an arm's length it's not a huge projector but it does last like six eight hours plus on my skin so very very good bang for your buck excellent value and you can get this for extremely inexpensive um, on fragrancebuy.ca that's where i purchased this one so by the way this video is not sponsored <laughs> so that is our first one nishane hundred silent ways the next one is from tom ford and this is fleur de portofino eau de parfum so i do apologize you guys i'm not even sure if this is considered a niche fragrance um, feel free to correct me down below if you like, but I do believe that because this is from the more expensive line of Tom Ford, um, this little bottle, this 50 ml bottle retails for, I think, over $200. I'm not even sure. But anyways, I considered this to be niche because it is quite expensive. So that's kind of my view on it. Um, so this one is also quite new and this was a new love of mine as well. This is essentially a citrusy bright summertime floral fragrance i do believe that there is a little bit of um, some warmer notes in the base maybe something like amber or vanilla i'm not exactly sure what's in the base i think there's honey in here too there's something in here that really warms it up and makes it a little bit sweet um, but essentially what i get from this one i'm so shaky today i've again i drink too much coffee and then i just get shaky um, this one i get I just get a beautiful, sophisticated, floral summer fragrance with a little bit of citrus. That's what I get. And of course, I do get a lot of like tropical smelling flowers. For me, this smells like 
rich woman on vacation. It also makes me think of a classy summertime, like classy, sophisticated summertime fragrance. I love this. I honestly could see myself wearing this every single day in the summer. Um, I also really, really like the bottle. Look at how stunning that bottle is, you guys. I love everything about this. I love how it looks on my vanity. I love the way it smells. I think it's very classy. Um, when I purchased this one, I did, oh, and by the way, this has excellent lasting power, like really, really good lasting power. When I first purchased this, I did accidentally purchase the Fleur de Portofino Aqua, which is the Eau de Toilette version. And that one had pretty good performance too, but um, I do prefer the EDP. So if you're on the fence, the EDT is a lot cheaper, or sorry, a lot more affordable. Um, but this one, I do find the performance to be better. And I also prefer the scent of this one. For me, the EDT came across a little bit more woody citrus and musky almost and um, it just wasn't my absolute favorite. This one I love from start to finish, and so I do prefer the Eau de Parfum. So that is the next one on our list. So the next one, you guys, is not going to come as a surprise, and I do apologize that this is repetitive, but I talk about Delina a lot because I love it. <laughs> so this is Delina exclusive from Parfums de Marly. If you guys watch my channel, you know that this is not only one of my favorite um, niche fragrances. It's also one of my favorite fragrances in general. Like, worth every penny. I absolutely love this. So this is a beautiful creamy vanilla rose fragrance. It's got a little bit of a fruity opening, but not as much as the original Delina. Also, it has a bit of a woodiness in the base. It's got like a woody vanilla base to it. And I honestly, I don't know how to describe this. This is an example of a perfume where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. To look at the notes, I would never have been able to imagine what this would smell like. Um, and it's one of my absolute favorite fragrances of all time. I do really like the bottle as well. I love that it has this heavy cap and I just, from the moment I first saw these bottles, they had me completely captivated and I absolutely had to try and see what all the fuss was about. And I love this so much. So the main difference for me between the original Delina and this one is that this one just has more vanilla and it's not quite as tart. The original Delina had that rhubarb note, which I really like, by the way, I think it's very unique and I'm kind of kicking myself for getting rid of the original Delina. I think it's worth having both. They're so beautiful and so unique, but this one just has a little bit of a sweeter, more vanilla quality about it. And I find it so sophisticated, so pretty. The compliment getting lasts forever. Like this thing literally lasts forever, you guys. Um, and I just feel very, very put together and very lavish when I wear this. It's also a gorgeous fragrance for a romantic date night. I do prefer it for the summertime, but sometimes I am tempted to wear it in the winter, but for me, it definitely is more of a summertime perfume. So that is the next one on my list. I couldn't live without this thing. <laughs> I love this. The next one is another one that's fairly new to my collection, and this is Exidolo Love and Crime. Um, so this one is very niche. It's one that I hadn't even heard really circulating. I think I think the first person that I heard talking about this one is Tara from Ofactophiles. Again, I will put a link down to her channel down below. Um, I just kind of saw this sitting on her shelf and then when I was looking through, I was browsing samples on Lucky Scent, I saw that there was a sample of this one and I picked it up and it turned out to be so delicious and I fell in love with it like within the first day and ended up getting a bottle. Um, so this is a gourmand fragrance. There is notes of sugar in here. There's chocolate. I, I'm not sure if there's vanilla or caramel. I think there's vanilla, but maybe the caramel is what's missing. But for me, I definitely get a little bit of a caramel vibe. Um, I think that the cacao and the sugar notes and the vanilla are blended so perfectly together that you have trouble picking out one or the other. That's why it comes across as like caramelly to me. And it's just a very sweet gourmand fragrance. It does open up with quite a lot of orange. It opens up with a hefty dose of mandarin orange. Um, so much so that I didn't even think I really liked it in the beginning. When I first put this on my skin, my first thought was, nope, that's too orangey. That's way too orangey. I don't like it. Um, it gave me very strong orange creamsicle vibes initially, and I didn't think I was going to enjoy it. Again, this is one that you have to wait a couple minutes unless you really like orange. Maybe about even 10 or 15 minutes after spraying this, I started to understand 
where the hype came from about this scent and I just fell completely in love with it. It's one of the strongest, best performing, yummiest gourmand fragrances I have ever smelt. For me, I'm gonna just go out on a limb and say this beats out Love by Killian. Um, I do also have Love by Killian, which is also a sugary sweet scent. This one for me is better, in my opinion. So anyways, this one is a little bit pricey. It does retail at 165 Canadian dollars for a little 30 mil. So quite pricey, but you don't need much because it has excellent performance. So I think two or maybe three sprays max and you will be good for the entire day or the entire night. So I absolutely love this one. Exi Dolo Love and Crime. The next one is another bit of a cliche fragrance and um, yeah, sorry for that. <laughs> this is Baccarat Rouge 540 from Maison Francis Kirkjohn. So this one again was one that I kind of went on a bit of a roller coaster um, experience with. When I first smelt this, you guys, way back in the beginning of my perfume journey, um, I did not like it. I didn't see what the hype was. I, I didn't not like it, but I didn't like it either. Um, it just kind of was like... I didn't understand the hype. I didn't know what I was smelling. At that point, I still had a very new baby nose and I was used to smelling things like Black Opium and Livia Bell. And um, I just didn't have any experience with niche fragrances. And so this one didn't appeal to me when I first smelt it. I had to really take my time with it. But what happened was the longer that I stayed in the perfume game and the more perfumes I smelt, um, the more I started to appreciate this one. And now, in my opinion, it's one of the best I have. Um, so I'm not gonna talk too much about it because everybody knows what this smells like. And you've heard about it in 10,000 different perfume videos. But basically, this is a very sweet, resinous, sort of an earthy, um, sparkling kind of a fragrance. It's very sweet, has like a bit of a cotton candy vibe to some people, although I don't get so much cotton candy in like a synthetic sense as I do like a natural sense. Very naturally sweet, luminous, um, beautiful. It's just, it's totally sparkling. I'm actually going to take the lid off and remind remind myself what it smells like. It's just very bright and ritzy and luxurious and smooth and I really, really like it. I don't have any other niche fragrance in my collection that gives me the same vibes that this one does. Um, this one really does make me feel very put together, very luxurious, very glam when I wear it. So um, I haven't actually had an opportunity to wear this specific bottle since I've purchased it. I do have a decant that I've been working on, um, but I don't wear it very often because I do want this to be associated with good memories. Memories. I want this to be associated with a romantic dinner or a luxurious vacation or something like that. And of course, 2020, we haven't done anything really. So I'm kind of, I know I shouldn't, but I'm kind of saving it for a special occasion. So that is Baccarat Rouge 540 from MFK. The next one is another new one to my collection. This is Montal Roses Musk. Um, so this one, people have compared to Roses Vinny from Mansara, and they've also compared it to Intense Cafe from also from Montal. Um, so this is essentially a jasmine, rose, and musk fragrance, but depending on the website you look at, you can also find some other notes that are in here. Um, and for me, what I mostly get is a subtly sweet, very kind of synthetic, intense, musky rose fragrance. The rose that's in here is not fresh. It's not a fresh bouquet of flower type of rose. It's not a fresh rose scent. And the musk that's in here is not like your typical musk that you would find in a Narciso Rodriguez perfume. This is a very unique fragrance. I honestly didn't think I liked it when I first smelled it because I thought it was too similar to Rose's Vinny which I also have. And my first thought was, I certainly don't need both. Like it's way too similar. I need to just, I'll just pass this along. However, I actually, dare I say, I like this better than Rose's Vinny. This is such an addictive, intoxicating fragrance. When I put this on my skin, I cannot stop smelling my skin. Rose's Vinny takes it up a notch with the sweetness. It is extremely syrupy sweet and almost to the point that I find it difficult to wear. I have to go very lightly and I can only wear it in certain circumstances. This one I find to be a lot more wearable. This one I think is more wearable in a lot of situations. I think it would be perfect for a date night, Valentine's Day, but this would also make a great signature scent. Yeah, and I'm going to do a comparison video comparing this one, Rose's Vinny, and Intense Cafe, and I'm probably going to declutter one or two and just keep one. So stay tuned for that, you guys. Um, that is something I'm toying with because I do think that they are all so similar. I do not think you need all three, um, but I definitely suggest testing them out because you might really prefer 
a note profile of a different perfume so I wouldn't say just blind buy one I would say definitely try to get samples and the last one on my list is Byredo Bal de Freak so this one you guys is also fairly new to my collection I've wanted a Byredo fragrance for a really long time something about the name the bottles just the simplistic beautiful design and at the same time it looks so expensive and so classy just like timelessly chic I've always really been attracted to the Byredo bottles um, and I did get a few samples I tested them out so I still do have to try some other Byredo fragrances but this one was the one that I really really liked out of the ones that I had tried so this one you guys is a very fresh woody sophisticated everyday kind of a scent the name Balda Freak I do believe translates into African ball so to me it seems like it would be a more luxurious glamorous like nighttime type of a perfume but that's not really what I get from it you could wear it for a dressed up occasion but for me I do think it is a fairly casual grab and go easy to wear fragrance and I do think that this would make an excellent signature scent this has a lot of citrusy notes in it it has a lot of earthy woody notes um, I think there's some florals in there as well I believe there's some floral notes in the opening. It's just a beautiful, classy, easy to wear, grab and go, lovable fragrance. Um, I haven't really given it a proper wear during the daytime. I've only tested it in the evening, so I can't really tell you about the longevity. And I don't know if it's a compliment getter or anything like that yet. I'm just going to take the lid off. The other thing that I do like about them, as I've told you guys, it does have a magnetic cap, which I really appreciate. And it has the little bee on the atomizer and I just I love it you guys it's like the most beautiful bottle in the world so it's such a pretty unique fragrance woody fresh floral sophisticated different again this is one that took a while to grow on me when I first smelt it I wasn't in love with it but again after wearing it I just kept coming back and it was one of those ones that you couldn't stop sniffing your wrist so I did end up deciding to invest in a bottle of this one and um, yeah I absolutely love it so that is the last one on our list by Rado Balda Freak so that was it for today's video you guys I'm really interested to know if you guys are going to be joining me on a low buy journey for a few months um, and also please let me know if you like any of these niche fragrances or if you have any must-have niche that you think it would be worth me getting a sample of and also feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram if you haven't already where I share a lot of other little bits of my life that you don't see here on YouTube and I'll see you guys all next time bye for now